alcohol, whether it's utilized as a rite of passage, a means to let loose or to drown one's sorrows, it's clear that this beverage has had a profound influence on society for quite some time. Nevertheless, in recent years it appears that increased knowledge of health risks and rising costs of living, among other factors, has caused alcohol to lose its luster. For some, consuming alcohol has become an increasingly expensive and risky endeavor that's simply not worth it, rather than the historically default means to celebrate, socialize, and unwind. With shifting trends in alcohol consumption, this begs the question, should you avoid alcohol? In other words, should you go cold turkey and refuse to drink any alcohol? Or, despite the risks, should you deliberately limit your consumption to, say, a few drinks every now and then, rather than quitting entirely? Today's discussion explores these questions by highlighting common reasons individuals consume alcohol, recent studies regarding alcohol's health risks, and explanations for shifting consumption trends among younger generations. Once this is complete, I'll provide some commentary on the above-mentioned knowledge, along with my rationale for abstaining from alcohol and personal observations that influence this decision. To begin, why do people consume alcohol? What are their motives for drinking? An article from Psychology Today notes that motivations for drinking can essentially be reduced to four main categories. Quote, 1. Coping. Dealing with unpleasant emotions. 2. Conformity. Trying to fit in. 3. Enhancement. Wanting the pleasurable effects associated with alcohol. 4. Social. Enjoying others' company. The first two are considered negative drinking motives and relate to winding down, using alcohol to deal with it, whatever it is for you. The latter two are referred to as positive drinking motives and relate to winding up, using alcohol for fun, end quote. Another Psychology Today article provides other factors slash motives such as, quote, past experiences, impulsive personality, and environment. End quote, but they can be amalgamated into the existing four categories. I'll provide further commentary later, but for now, I'll remark that I generally concur with the four classifications. Anyhow, in this next section, I'll briefly discuss the latest research regarding alcohol's health risks. As a preface, listen to these lines from the Mayo Clinic. Quote, research on alcohol suggests a sobering conclusion. Drinking alcohol in any amount carries a health risk. While the risk is low for moderate intake, the risk goes up as the amount you drink goes up. When it comes to alcohol, if you don't drink, don't start for health reasons. End quote. Indeed, it was previously surmised that drinking alcohol possessed some positive health benefits, but now it's ostensibly the case that there are only risks and little to no benefits. With that said, what are some potential long-term risks? According to the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, the risks include, quote, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, liver disease, and digestive problems, cancer of the breast, mouth, throat, esophagus, voice box, liver, colon, and rectum, weakening of the immune system, increasing the chances of getting sick, Learning and memory problems, including dementia and poor school performance. Mental health problems, including depression and anxiety. Social problems, including family problems, job-related problems, and unemployment. Alcohol use disorders or alcohol dependence. End quote. Quite the laundry list of potential long-term health and social risks really compels one to question if drinking alcohol even occasionally is worth it. Speaking of which, this line of questioning is apparently resonating with younger generations. One news article remarks, quote, Gen Zers are taking it slow as they enter adulthood, either by not drinking at all or drinking less often and in less quantity than older generations. The UK's largest recent study of drinking behaviors showed in 2019, 16 to 25-year-olds were the most likely to be teetotal, with 26% not drinking compared to the least likely generation, 55 to 74-year-olds, 15% of whom didn't drink, end quote. What could explain this trend? 
where young people are drinking less. A possible explanation from the same article notes, quote, Gen Zers are growing up in a unique social landscape where, weighed down by financial and societal worries, they're more risk-averse. They have a nuanced understanding of how drinking impacts their health and that of people around them. Consequently, a youth culture that has denormalized drinking is flourishing and the change is being felt. End quote. Phew. Plenty of data and conclusions to unpack, I know, but evidently necessary, nonetheless, with the applicable research outlined onto the analysis. Recalling the four primary motivation categories for alcohol consumption, coping, conformity, enhancement, and social, I've certainly pondered about them extensively. From my perspective, drinking alcohol to cope is the strongest motivator, greatly surpassing enhancement or social justifications. Why? Because coping with life's stressors, tragedies, and horrors is already difficult in of itself and alcohol presents a readily available means to alleviate the pains associated with existence. For those who drink to cope, they're likely aware of potential health risks but the supposed benefits of drinking, i.e. numbing the pain or temporarily forgetting about stressors, justifies the continued consumption. Growing up, I knew of extended family members who drank regularly. Although I didn't know if their primary reason was to cope, it certainly appeared that way at family gatherings. Maturing over the years has reinforced this conclusion since I've observed a relatively consistent pattern among distinct family members, friends, acquaintances, and strangers. Digressing, enhancement and social reasons are the second and third strongest motivators, respectively. Enhancement overlaps with coping because we naturally desire to experience pleasure and avoid slash reduce pain. The relaxation effect in terms of minimizing anxiety and inhibitions, feeling giddy or bubbly, can be classified as experiencing pleasure whilst simultaneously reducing discomfort. When combined with a social rationale, or drinking as a vehicle to mingle with others in bars, restaurants, and other venues, it becomes glaringly obvious as to why alcohol is consumed. When I was still in high school, I repeatedly observed this phenomenon because there was always a story from some party over the previous weekend where binge drinking occurred. I didn't attend any of those weekend parties, but I always heard about them through mutual friends and acquaintances. Although I had a general understanding regarding why my peers drank alcohol, I always questioned the rationale for doing so. A typical question would be, why would anyone enjoy becoming inebriated and suffering injurious consequences the following day or longer, such as nausea, vomiting, and a splitting headache, amongst others? I certainly didn't find that appealing back then, and this belief hasn't wavered since then. As I ventured through my undergraduate years, my experiences became more direct through a few occasions of minimal consumption, along with appearing at a handful of parties, bars, or clubs. The rare occasions where I've consumed alcohol occurred at home, and I've always made a point of remaining sober at venues where alcohol was served or nearby. Being in these environments provided more direct observation and insight into the behavior of others. Although some conclusions remained unchanged, i.e., people drinking to cope, numb the pain, escape from reality, be social, for pleasure, to fit in, etc., questions continued to perplex me. For example, why do people engage in activities that they know are detrimental to their health? What's the point of this hedonistic escapism, especially if it's ineffective in the long term and any short-term benefits it provides are immensely fleeting? Why and how do people become trapped in such a vicious cycle? The cycle being that they experience pain, attempt to numb that pain through flawed methods, acquire some temporary benefits, but those benefits ultimately cause more harm than good. To conclude this section, I won't say much about the conformity rationale other than it's the weakest drinking motivator from my perspective. Although we certainly experience pressure from others to perform particular actions, to conform, in the case of drinking the other three motivators prove to be more influential. Furthermore, conformity could be subsumed under the social category if you really want to assign it there. Now. On to my personal reasons for abstaining from alcohol. As mentioned, I've consumed alcohol before, but even then it was once or twice a year at best. Furthermore, 
I haven't consumed any alcohol in at least the last two years. I can't say with 100% certainty that I won't consume any more in the future, but I can say that I'll avoid alcohol where possible since this has already become second nature. Anyway, on to my reasons. Reason 1. I extract no pleasure or satisfaction from alcohol. Phrased differently, I don't see the value of drinking and any supposed benefits are outweighed by its detrimental effects, i.e. severe hangover the next day. Although I've never been drunk, I can recall one instance where I was hungover. The most noticeable symptom was an intense headache which lasted for roughly half a day. Having to take things easy due to an avoidable outcome isn't justifiable when I have important tasks to do. Reason 2. Alcohol is a financial luxury that I can't afford to purchase, occasionally or regularly. Furthermore, like reason 1, I see no value in spending money on alcohol when I can purchase other things that actually bring me satisfaction. The opportunity cost for alcohol isn't justifiable in my mind. Reason 3. Individuals make ignorant and foolish choices, even while sober. Knowing this, alcohol only exacerbates the likelihood of making poor decisions that facilitate injurious consequences. I alluded to this earlier by remarking that I make a point of remaining sober, especially when I'm out and about or in unfamiliar environments. It's imperative to remain vigilant to be aware of probabilities and potential dangers. Preserving my wits and rational decision-making abilities is conducive to this objective, especially when I'm with loved ones and friends. I'm less likely to effectively protect myself and those I care about during hostile situations if my physical and mental capabilities are impaired. Reason 4. I abstain from drinking for health reasons not only to reduce potential long-term complications, but also out of fear. Although I generally consider myself to be low in impulsiveness, I fear that if I start drinking, I won't be able to stop. By refusing to drink, I can avoid this outcome entirely. Reason 5. Moral and Religious Reasons I perceive the reliance on alcohol as a weakness or significant moral failing, especially when it really gets out of control. If I desire to improve and become the best version of myself, then I must avoid alcohol and rely instead on constructive coping mechanisms. Desiring to become stronger whilst heavily depending on alcohol to cope are two positions which can't be reconciled. If I want to become as strong as possible, physically, mentally, and spiritually, then I can't consume something that weakens me in all three senses. I suppose you could remark that I have an internal moral obligation, or maxim, that compels me to avoid alcohol. As flawed as these reasons may be, I still adhere to them, nonetheless. To conclude, should you avoid alcohol? From a health standpoint, the answer is unequivocally yes, since the benefits don't outweigh the risks. However, as with many decisions, the choice to drink or not drink rests with you. Despite the health risks and potential long-term complications, you may deem the rewards to be worth the risk. If you're like me where you already avoid drinking, don't succumb to pressure from others to start drinking or to drink more. This superficial reason, conformity, is beneficial to nobody and only causes more harm than good. If all your friends do when you hang out is drink, then perhaps you need to find a new group of friends, especially if it appears that they're dragging you down. Additionally, they don't care about you or your health if they pressure you into drinking. True friends would encourage you to engage in constructive activities, not destructive ones. You may say, it's okay, I can manage how much I drink. Maybe now, but for how long? How long before one drink per day slash week turns into two, three, four, or more? How long before life's hardships break you down until you need alcohol to cope? Avoid that risk entirely by not drinking, but remember that if you drink, then you do so at your own peril. At the bottom of every bottle is more emptiness, and no matter how much you drink, it won't alleviate the emptiness. Thus, it's imperative that you find something positive which can fill, or in the very least, alleviate the emptiness. Thank you for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing.